Greetings, new earth engineers. It is time to co-create heaven on earth together as a collective for all of humanity. With these intense light waves coming in through the solar waves, many things are being activated. Many beings are being awakened, awakened from the dream of time, of linear time into what we may call spatial time or non-linear time. I want to discuss a few things before we get into our transmission. I'm going to return to free will because there were a couple comments that I'm going to clarify a couple things. And the point I was getting to, if you listen to the transmission a couple days ago about do we truly have free will, part of the reason behind speaking about this thing this concept of free will is to awaken in the listener the ability or the will to question everything. Even question what I say. And these are things that we need to contemplate, especially when in doubt, when doubt rises. Really go into the depth of contemplating these concepts. But eventually we get to the point where we let it all go, we release we free ourselves from the concepts when we experience the direct experience of the divine. So obviously, this concept of free will is having the freedom to will whatever it is you desire into this manifestation of the Tao. So obviously, this concept of free will is about having the power or the ability to navigate and change our lives with coherency and cohesiveness through our minds. So obviously, just like awareness and awakening, there's different levels to free will. Now, if you have observed the environment and the world and the collective, most people that we experience have little to no free will. They're living out the story. They're living out the program. And this is a concept that Taoist masters realized when they went into the depths of these concepts and realized that the programming of the DNA, the programming of what is being called the matrix. In the past, we call it Maya, or the illusion, the simulation, the delusion, the illusion, the dream, that which is not real. We have different levels to free will, and this is all about the awakening process. That's why I bring this concept up. And also, I'm seeing in the awareness of the collective the, the fear of losing their free will to higher dimensional beings, non-physical beings, the star nations, things like that. And if you were living free will, that's not even possible. So this is something I'm saying not to get into the fear and into the doubt of the power that's within yourself. But what we need to do through this awakening process, this ascension process, as we're on our quest, is to realize where we are at right now. So part of this is the free will having the will and the intent to manifest new earth. Now, ultimately, there's total free will or ultimate free will. And you would know if you were in that state, you'd be able to at will come and go from this realm into the non-physical at will. So it, until we're in that state of manifesting heaven on earth, we're still, in a sense, partially in 3D, People are experience this concept of being in between two worlds, meaning it being in between the physical and non-physical. It's like in between being awake and sleep. Some call it the hypnagogic state. So we're experiencing these strange anomalies in our reality, such as things like the Mandela effect or experiencing non-physical entities or shadow beings or higher dimensional entities that doesn't make sense to the to the conscious mind. And this is all going to become clear in time throughout this ascension process. So part of the reason I bring up free will is to realize, to bring clarity to awareness that is in fear of losing their free will. If you can, if your free will can be taken from you, you're not living in free will. So it's kind of a contradiction. And there's many of these contradictions. And that's why these these debates that go on, they can go on forever. That's why I don't get involved with debating. This is my perspective. Everyone's perspective and perception is unique. And it's I'm 
is valid. We're validating you are perceiving it. But for instance, if you're experiencing demons or reptilians or, or evil things, I'm not invalidating by saying they don't exist. I'm just saying they're not real. And there's a big difference between what is real and what exists. Things in existence, and I've covered this in past transmissions or Dharma, Dharma talks that I have done in the past. And to try to clarify this, one of the best answers that I've heard coming from a teacher, master, guru, when the, the mind of the student is in doubt and they say, well, teacher, guru, what, how do I know the difference between what is real and what is not real or what is illusion or the simulation? And the guru answered simply by realizing that which is real never changes. What is not real is always changing. And that's why masters such as Dr. Walter Russell came up with the concept that God is the still white magnetic light at the center of all things because that still white light at the center, that magnetic light never changes. It manifests things that change, but those things are an extension or an emanation of the Tao, not the Tao itself. It's connected. All things are connected through uh, the time-space continuum and through awareness. And that's why the Zen masters, they knew this conundrum of conflicting concepts and they realize that the truth is beyond words what we're experiencing what is true so they would say all things are perfectly resolved in the unborn mind of buddha and they knew that this doesn't resolve the doubt in man but once the human mind can use these concepts as fingers pointing to the moon that's a guide that takes you to that awakening to that pure awareness to that enlightenment that until you experience that moon, you look at the moon, you experience the unborn with this waking conscious mind, that inner conscious or unconscious unborn mind of Buddha, and the two worlds merge, the mind will still be in doubt, it will be still in the separation program, and it will not be living free will. So the ultimate free will is to merge or reconnect, relink yourself through self awareness through self-awakening and reconnecting to your true self, your true nature. And we do this through spiritual practices such as meditation, spiritual awakening, any spiritual practice ultimately is the path of self-realization or your true self because all beings are born perfectly awakened Buddhas, but that pure awareness is converted to the three hells the angry demon, the hungry ghost, and the frightened animal. And then that awareness identifies with those masks, and then that becomes part of their internal map of reality and their belief system. There is a saying in NLP. NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. It's a technique to reprogram the mind in a positive way. The concept is the map is not the territory. And this is part of people's belief system such as the religion, their politics, their culture, that these concepts within their internal map of reality, how they navigate this realm, and it's not that the internal map of reality is good or bad, right or wrong, but they become our philosophy, they become our perception of reality, not which is truth or what is real, because these are beyond the map, these are beyond all concepts. So we use the the map to navigate this realm and ultimately realize that the truth is beyond the words, beyond the feelings, beyond the thoughts, and we drop the map altogether, even just for a moment, to experience that pure awareness. And that is one concept of awakening, awakening from the dream of the simulation. It's the, the mirror effect, the manifestation, the emanation and our true self is that which is emanating, that which is creating, that which is manifesting. We'll get into some updates now and then our, our transmission for the day. One thing I wanted to talk about was the couple synchronicities. Yesterday when I uploaded the Red Moon Wave spell, we entered the Red Moon Wave spell yesterday in the Mayan Dream Spell journey. When I looked at the dashboard, they call it in YouTube, 
It said that it was uploaded at exactly 4.44 p.m. And it was the 999th video that I've uploaded. Now, I know that it posts something different, 992, because I deleted some videos. But as, as when I uploaded YouTube's count all the, of all the videos that I've uploaded in the last 10 years or so, 9, 10 years, was 999. And then as I scrolled down the, the um, video from Light Body System Upgrades, the mothership is in position, blue crystal hand, on February 4th few days ago was at 11 17 p.m and it had 1711 views so we are seeing these synchronicities every everywhere now all the time and they're just signs and symbols of this path that we're on this awakening path today there was a whiteout blast earlier today on the schumann resonance chart now, it's been reported, and this is on DisclosureNews.it, was a power of 69 hertz. Now, I know a lot of people are in contradiction about the, you know, the different resonances, the different frequencies on the Schumann, that it doesn't reach those. So, one person explained it that had more expertise. I've done a lot of research on the Schumann resonance, but I'm no expert. I just, you know, feel the energies as these shifts come in and I see a lot of a mirror on the charts. So I look at the chart and someone that knew this a little bit at a higher level than myself kind of explained it. You know, these resonance, the, the base is like 7.83 hertz, which is the, the foundation, the, the base resonance tone. And these are the vibrations and the resonating frequencies between the earth herself and the ionosphere, the space in between the atmosphere that they record with special instruments. And in the past, they would say that it was at this resonant tone of 7.83 hertz. And then obviously, you know, around 2012, people started taking more notice of this and started seeing these higher resonances coming in that they claim, these scientists, that they were, haven't been recorded in the past. They've been recording these for many many years so we're seeing this so it's almost as if you know we still have that 7.83 base and then there, there's these higher kind of like octaves in sound and frequency and these higher octaves or resonating frequencies it's almost like an overtone kind of when you do a sacred chant and the voice will hit these higher overtone frequencies this is what it, we're seeing on these charts, you know, on these, these recordings, people record with certain instruments that record these frequencies. So it's kind of irrelevant, but we, we're seeing the synchronicities in these charts. We're seeing these changes coming through, and they're accelerating and hitting these higher overtones as we're experiencing the acceleration of everything from time, uh, from different energy fluctuations, what people are calling ascension symptoms. They're, they're, they're mirroring each other. So this is why many people that are conscious of this awakening process or this ascension process are seeing these things and speaking about them because it's it's just another sign and symbol of what we're experiencing as a collective then also with all the earthquake activity because this is also part of the prophecies of the ancient masters the ancient teachers guides that in these final days of the old false matrix that we're going to see these great earth changes and we're seeing it in the weather patterns we're seeing them in the earthquakes the volcanoes and nature and the animal kingdom you know every day i'm seeing new things manifest not necessarily negative you know we perceive things as being positive or negative or good or bad such as you know these swarms of locusts nature does everything for a reason ice melting earthquakes going off she is a very intelligent, way more intelligent than any one human. <laughs> Nature knows what she needs. Mother Earth knows exactly what needs to be done to balance. It's a, the Tao. We say the Tao, the way is nature constantly in the state of synchronization, harmonization, and balance. Where there's a flood over here, there's a fire over there. It's, it's a balancing act. Part of the creation of 
this resonating realm, this realm of sound, of light frequencies. We had over 180 earthquakes in the past 24 hours, M1.5 or greater, the largest 5.5 in Drake Passage. Again, multiple earthquakes in Puerto Rico. That's that Atlantean energy rising up now around the Ring of Fire. That's the Lemurian in the Pacific. We're seeing this all around the Ring of Fire. We had a the Drake Passage was is like in between Chile, South America, and Antarctica. It's like a passageway in between the two land masses. Excuse me. We had a 4.4 in India, 4.5 in the Philippines, 4.4 in Chile, in the Andes Mountains, 3.1, 3.2, 3.5 in Puerto Rico, one after another within an hour's time. 4.1 in the Aleutian Islands, and a 3.3 again in Puerto Rico a couple hours ago. It's around 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time here. And one reporting I read today, some more good news, is the bald eagle population is thriving in Ohio. They're calling it one of the nation's biggest comeback stories. And it's funny, the article, 33.7 views, 33, 73. 37, 73, 1010 portal. These 1010 energies coming in today. The kin 210, 210, the 210s. The bald egos in Ohio were at the brink of extinction in 1979. There was only four breeding pairs reported that we knew of, of course. And this, there were many contributing factors, things such as D DDT. Uh, the destruction of na natural marshes, woodlands, the illegal shooting, contamination of the food source, many things. But what it was reported that also 90% of wetland habitats across many Midwestern states have been lost to urban centers expanding, the expansion of cities. So we're, they were on the brink of total extinction. And then due to banning DDT, conservation programs, many other things, that from 2013 to 2017, they saw a 5% increase. There was an increase over time from 1979 to 2013, a small increase, and then they saw like an exponential growth from 2013 to 17. Then 2018 and 19, the numbers began to soar. And then over the past two years, there was an increase of 20 to 30 percent. It has been reported in 2019 that there were approximately 346 eagle nests within the state, with pairs producing an estimated 445 young. So this is a very good sign. You know, obviously the eagle, the bald eagle, is a symbol of freedom. The new earth is a symbol of heaven on earth, of ultimate freedom, true freedom. Over the last 10 years, I've had the pleasure and joy of spending much time and connecting with the Bald Eagle Nation, with the Eagle Medicine, the Eagle Path. It's a very powerful medicine, and they're magnificent creatures with great power and beauty. We'll get started on today's first transmission called Creating the New Golden Age through Ashtar, channeled by James McConnell. This is Ashtar. I come at this time to be with you in these moments and to help you understand more and more through this ascension process that you are in now, it, that it is a moment-to-moment -moment basis. It is something that you have been preparing for, planning for, for eons of time, understanding your sense of time now in this three-dimensional space. For you are moving into the sense of no time. Be in order to do that, but you must first overcome the various programming that you have been ensconced within the sense of time. Time is irrelevant. Time is just a part of the frequency that is here in these moments in this third dimension. It is not truly relevant outside of this dimension. But as you are still somewhat in this dimension, certainly at times many of you find yourselves highly more and more in the fourth dimension and even sometimes in the fifth when you feel that sense of bliss come over you when you feel that sense of being in no time when you feel the sense of spaciousness around you and within you that feeling of being lost within yourself that is the fifth dimension 
That is the higher frequencies that you are longing to find yourselves in more and more. And we are all attempting to assist you in that process of moving through these lower frequencies into the higher frequencies. But now that the clouds are parting, in the sense that the frequency barrier is opening and becoming more and more fully open and dispersed and allowing for the rays of love to come through, this is what is occurring now as you look up into the skies. More and more of you are seeing these colors coming through. You are wondering, you have been wondering, what is this? This is that frequency barrier dropping and allowing for the higher frequencies of love to come through. As you are preparing now in these weeks and these months ahead, always being in the present moment as you prepare for the next moment and the next moment after that, which is leading you in this ascension process, taking you to the next level. You are all, my friends, moving to the next levels within you. But in order to do that more and more frequently, more fully, you first need to let go of more and more of that old programming that says that yes has you contained within the sense of time more and more. That old programming that keeps you from realizing your dreams, that keeps your imagination from becoming alive within you. All of that programming you must let go of more and more until the point where you arrive at the zero point within yourself. That point where all of consciousness comes together in the one moment. And at that point you realize who you are, fully what you are here for, fully all that you are about. At that moment, the power within you rises. That power that comes from deep, deep within you at the molecular conscious level and rises up. And the source of your being becomes your all in the moment. That is where you are all headed. That is where you are all in the process of becoming right now. So allow that to continue to come through you. Be in the present moment. Know that you are in the present moment. And do everything that you can to find that neutral space within yourself where nothing outside of yourself matters anymore. Where you find yourself completely out of judgment of yourself and others. Where all the sense of fear is gone where sadness is replaced by joy, where fear is replaced by love. That is the process that you are in now, these next weeks and months as the ascension becomes more and more prevalent within each and every one of you, when you will become more and more fully aware that you are in that process. Maybe not that you have fully ascended, that you are fully in that process of ascension. That is your preparation now in these moments. Do everything that you can to prepare. Prepare for the event that is coming and in the higher realms has already arrived. It is all up to you, my friends, my brothers and sisters, all up to each and every one of you, for it only takes a small percentage of the entire population of this planet to alter the course of history, just as you have already done to alter the timelines, to move into a timeline, into an ascension timeline rather than a destruction timeline. You have all passed beyond the point of destructive timeline. Now it is all about creating the life that you want, creating the planet that you want, creating this new golden age that you want. I am Ashtar. Continue to create the life, the consciousness that you all intend have had, and have intended for many thousands of years to come to this very point, to come to this very moment, this moment centered in the new dawn. This was from posted by lovehasone.org and from Laura Pleiadian, taking it to another level. What are you observing? Are you awake enough to know that you are in your heart or not? Are you able to observe when you are not in your heart? Or do you live through being enticed by the status quo and have not even yet entered your heart at all? Can you observe that at all? Can you actually check and observe what is going through your awareness? Are you aware in every moment that thoughts are going through you? Are you still attached to looking good to others? Or have you let go of that attachment? When will you give it your all and be consciously aware of your every breath, of every moment? Are you awake enough to observe what is the you that exists when you live through your heart? And also observe what is the you that exists when you live through your thoughts unrestrained? Are you able now to wake up, observe, and then choose your new level of constant awareness? Observe your consciousness, your level of how you are being moment to moment now, 
then as you step it up to the next level of your awareness, you will see your reality changes. In love and in this, we activate you through your heart now. From Laura Pleiadian, the new divinehumanity.com. And that also touches on what I was speaking of earlier about the levels of awareness, the levels of consciousness. And that part of the ascension is becoming aware of this now moment and living 100% from our heart, being connected to all things. And that is what many of the ancient teachers, the masters, spoke of in the past. And they saw through these prophecies, through these visions of this new earth, this new world that we will manifest as a collective, that we are right on the precipice, we are at the tipping point, we are in the 11th hour, 59 minutes, and so many seconds to this breakthrough moment, what many are calling the quantum leap of consciousness, from Homo sapien as a collective to Homo luminous as a collective light body. Now we have a full snow moon coming February 8th, into the ninth, which will be tomorrow as of this recording, with 13 full moons, two super moons, and a blue moon during 2020. Sky gazers have plenty of celestial. If you missed last month's full wolf moon eclipse, you can catch the full snow moon lighting up the sky this weekend, the night sky. Why is it called a snow moon? Of course, because of the snow. In ancient times, it was common to track changing seasons by the lunar month instead of the solar year, which is what our current calendar is based on. According to timeanddate.com, Native American tribes and people across Europe used to name months based on attributes they associated with seasons in the northern hemisphere. So the full moon in February is called a snow moon because of heavy snowfall that typically occurs throughout the month. It was also called the hunger moon because the winter weather created difficult hunting conditions and scarce food sources. The best time to see the snow moon will be the night of Saturday, February 8th. According to the Farmer's Almanac, it'll rise in the east, reaching its highest point in the sky around midnight. And at 2.34 a.m., 2.34, this Sunday it reaches its, full, its peak fullness. While it won't be the biggest moon of the year like last February's super snow moon, this year's snow moon will be the fourth closest full moon of the year, according to Earth Sky. This means it'll be the fourth largest and fourth brightest full moon of 2020. So along with the February's full moon and Mercury retrograde, it will have us all on an energetic overload. As we move into February, we make our way closer and closer to the full moon. The full moon itself will be on the 8th and the 9th in the sign of Leo. This full moon is going to be bringing us all to a new place in our lives. We will be much more passionate and offered strength. While some of us will be more willing to step out of our comfort zone and really take the lead in our own lives, not everyone will be feeling this way. Tensions may be quite high and working to avoid crisis points during this time will be important. Finding balance may not be easy, and you really need to pay close attention to the things that are going on. These full moon energies will be lasting for a few weeks, even after the full moon is over, and they will remain present until Mercury goes retrograde on the 16th. In regards to these energies, Astrology King wrote, Mercury retrograde on February 16th at 12 53 makes a significant and challenging aspect to the moon. There are no major fixed stars conjunct Mercury, but the moon is on a powerful star in the heart of the scorpion. From the Zolkin Times, Kin 210, White Lunar Dog. Lunar is the name for the number two, and its key words are stabilize, polarize, and challenge. This is the second day of the red moon, wave spell, and a portal day. The number two is challenging itself, and when it falls on a portal day, it can be a, a bit intense. Today is White Dog, which represents love, loyalty, and heart. Normally, dog days are fun and playful and good for putting your heart into whatever you do. When dog falls on a lunar day, the dog is challenged, and the inner Doberman can surface. Be very careful today that you do not growl at your loved ones. Matters of the heart can be tricky. The guide today is the white wind, which is the symbol of communication. 
When all else fails, open the channels of communication. If the dog bites, say sorry. From Christina Papagiorgio, White Lunar Dog, Kin 210, 7 February 2020, 722020 equals 724 equals 13 equals 4, 7 Magic Mystic Spiritual Solitude. 13. Goddess Day, Cosmic Consciousness, Expansion, Natural Lore. 4. Form, Structure, Foundation, Earth, Angelic. Another Foundation Day, Building Upon the Energies of the 22 Code to Build Our New Foundation of Peace. Kin 210 equals 3. Holy Trinity, Joy, Creativity, Union. A Potent Gap, Galactic Activation, Portal Day bringing forth much love and divine blessings from the goddess. Day 2 in the red moon wave spell of the goddess who is enhancing our intuition and sensitivity as we purify our vessels in order to receive pure consciousness and initiate more flow. Today we are anchoring more flow into the physical plane through connecting to our family through the power of unconditional love. We are challenged to recognize and stabilize all that is not aligned with divine love. Tone of creation, lunar, tone two in the physical realm. The lunar tone represents the sacred twins, cooperation, relationship, polarity of male and female, and duality. Its action polarizes power, challenges, essence, stabilizing. A day filled with uncovering how you can transcend duality through the power of unconditional love and loyalty. It is time to step up out of the duality game and all its possible challenges in order to move into more flow. Polarity reveals your conflicts, struggles, and the apparent separation created by your belief in duality. Polarized positions actually work in cooperative alliance. In cooperation, all polarities serve as backgrounds for full appreciation of one another and the whole. Examine the opposites and polarity within yourself. Explore your divine feminine and masculine aspects. Has your feminine aspect been repressed from being receptive to the love that surrounds and enfolds you? It is real to express your true inner being and allow more receptivity to flow into your life. Do not hide parts of yourself, compartmentalizing fragments of your soul. No longer can we wear the masks of duality. The goddess is calling for reunification. No polarity battles, duels, or conflict. Just one river flowing in the same direction. Note, be mindful of any conflict or relationship challenges that arise today which need to be harmonized and stabilized into oneness. So, beloved planetary kin, another divine goddess day to express, flow, and unite through the power of unconditional love. Today's question is how can I move beyond duality, conflict, and challenges to allow for greater love and loyalty to flow into your life? Divine blessings for flowing together with your beloved kin in the river of the goddess. Kin 210, white lunar dog. The mantra, the code for today is, I polarize in order to love, stabilizing loyalty. I seal the process of heart. With the lunar tone of challenge, I am guided by the power of spirit. I am a galactic activation portal. Enter me. Thank you for joining me today, beloved beings of light. Let us know in the comments below this video what you're experiencing, what you're seeing, what you're feeling, your visions, what is shining through the veils of these new earth energies. And if you're new to this channel, be sure to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below, below this video, and click the little bell next to subscribe to get notifications on future uploads. One last thing I want to touch on before I bid you all adieu is this concept that came up earlier about the unborn mind, our true self, the unborn mind of Buddha, or the unborn mind of God, the unborn mind of the Tao, whatever name you want to give to source energy. Now the Zen masters realized that the conundrum, the contradictions in the psyche of the human mind and realize that truth itself is beyond all words, it's beyond all concepts. But the human mind needs the concepts to navigate, to be guided back to itself, back to the source, 
back to the true light, the true nature. And one of the best words they came up with, no words even come close to that awakening, to that enlightenment. But the best words that they could come up with were concepts such as the unborn mind of Buddha or pure awareness. Now people will question, well, what is this unborn mind? What is pure awareness? And we'll say, that's something I can't even explain. It's beyond words. But know that that pure awareness exists and you can experience it. So through meditation, through practice, and how do we get there? Part of the process and part of meditation is turning off the internal dialogue. Then those thoughts that are constantly flowing through the brain. And this is part of activating what we call free will. Free will is our true self, our true nature. And part of the trick is that, part of the programming is that you have free will. It's not that free will doesn't exist. Some of you listening to this now may be living in free will. I cannot say. I don't claim to know everything, but I know the truth, which is beyond words. And that is the I am presence. That we all are equally, there's no separation other than in the programming, and that is part of activating the free will by taking the conscious moment, the, the conscious now, and stilling the mind, stilling the body, the mind, and the spirit, becoming totally still to experience that which is beyond the motion, the movement, the manifestation, and that stillness is a galactic portal that is the galactic activation portal, that zero point energy, that still point within the center, what some of the masters may call the kingdom of heaven within, that pure stillness, pure peace, pure silence, the power of silence. If that's the best I can do, that is maybe the greatest gift I can transmit to you here now, is that that is your birthright. That is why you came here to this transmission today to be activated in this galactic activation portal of total stillness. So we sit in still meditation practice, either sitting on the floor on a cushion, either half lotus, full lotus, or sitting in a chair with feet flat on the ground, spine gently straight. We sit in these postures, not because it's something special, but so that the mind doesn't fall asleep, the body doesn't fall asleep through the stillness. Because laying down and in these comfortable positions, the, the brain, the body, the mind will fall asleep. And then you fall into that unconscious. We, we merge the two worlds together by quieting the mind, by becoming totally still and letting go into that silence, into that stillness, going through and through and through, being aware of our breath, breathing in, pure light, the pure oxygen, the pure resonance, filling our vessel with the divine heavenly chi, the sacred chi, and the earthly chi, merging together in the still heart center, and putting our awareness, dropping our awareness into our heart center, the center of our body, the center of this temple, the center of this vessel. We let go into that feeling, and smile into that center, and become one with all things, in all realms, all timelines, all dimensions, as all merge into the Mu, M-U, not a thing, it is not something, it is not nothing, it is beyond the duality, beyond the form, beyond the emptiness, all the way through and through and through until you totally break through. The koans activate the gateless gate, and bring the awareness to realize that the mind is the barrier, the mind is the gate, the mind is the veil, and that is the false mind, the human mind, the mind that identified with the manifestation, with the masks, with the story. The Buddha realized that all is impermanent, all these things that we experience. So we practice non-attachment, not becoming attached to our thoughts, to our stories, to our past, to our manifestation as we awaken to the true still light, the infinite light and the infinite life at the center of all things, which is everywhere. Thank you for joining us today. Blessed and glorious angels of light, I do love you. Namaste.